Best known for her 1966 transatlantic number one hit, These Boots Are Made For Walkin', Nancy Sinatra began her career as an entertainer, starting with her November 57 appearance on her father's ABC variety show. She went on to make numerous television and film appearances and recorded 14 tracks that reached the Billboard Hot 100, 10 of which made the top 40. When reflecting back on her storied life and career, the 81-year-old says the only regret she has in life was not being a bad girl when she had the chance to be. If she had a time machine, she said she'd go back and have more sex, not get married as young as she did, and make a point of getting wrapped up in more affairs if possible. Join Facts First as we take a closer look at Nancy Sinatra's rise to fame while discovering the reasons why she wishes she'd been more promiscuous in her prime. More than just a daddy's girl. While old blue eyes Frank will always reign supreme as the Sinatra most people think of, thanks to his daughter's hit single, These Boots Are Made For Walkin', Nancy also carved out a pretty decent name for herself. Up until putting out that track, her career appeared to be jeopardized by her father's success. Frank cast an enormously large shadow, and those were some seriously large boots to fill. Fortunately for her, Nancy's number one song made her world famous. Not surprisingly for Nancy to differentiate herself from her dad's looming influence, she had to take a similar approach as Miley Cyrus did when she was trying to prove she was more than a former Disney brat who was the daughter of Billy Ray Cyrus. Reportedly, when Nancy was recording these boots, she was told to sing the song as if she was a 16-year-old girl who sleeps with truck drivers. By tapping into that perceived bad girl persona, she was able to successfully make a name for herself despite having one of the most recognized surnames on the planet. Nancy was almost dropped from her label. Even though she was on the same label as her father, Reprise Records, Nancy was very close to being dropped after her first few singles failed to chart. Fortunately, things took a refreshing change when she started working with producer Lee Hazelwood. Their first song together, So Long Babe, ended up becoming a modest hit and laid out a clear path that allowed these boots to become a landslide hit. Even though Hazelwood tried to pass himself off as some kind of hard-nosed country idiot, he was in fact a highly educated and talented guy who knew exactly what he was doing. Knowing there could be beauty and money in simplicity, he often requested the musicians working on Nancy's albums employed what he called a, quote, dumb sound. By that, he meant he wanted them to be uncomplicated, especially the rhythm section, bass lines, and guitar work. When Hazelwood wrote These Boots Are Made For Walkin', he initially intended to perform the song on his own. He wrote it several years before Nancy got a hold of it and thought of it as a party song. Nancy managed to convince him, however, that when a man sang it, it sounds harsh and abusive. But when a young girl like herself sung it, it took on a whole new vibe. When Hazelwood took his latest rounds of songs to Frank to get his thoughts on them, Frank nonchalantly told him the one about the boots was the best. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. And stick around for more about Nancy Sinatra. Reprise tried to cheat Nancy. Even though the song ended up becoming a massive international hit, Reprise still tried to pull a fast one over Nancy. Hazelwood recalls a time shortly after These Boots was number one in most of the world that Nancy came over to his house crying and saying the label hadn't picked up her option and further claimed she owed them 12 grand. Hazelwood called up his lawyer and what do you know, Reprise called Nancy the following day, offering her $1 million. Fortunately, all it took was Hazelwood calling his lawyer and Nancy having a chat with her dad for Reprise to agree to write her a new contract, which makes sense considering the fact she was selling far more records than even Frank was. Nancy says these boots didn't represent who she was. Even though Nancy became an overnight success and ended up inspiring a whole generation of women to don a pair of go-go boots and a miniskirt, she still had some regrets about doing the song. In her 1985 memoir, Nancy admitted the track didn't fit her personality. The persona that the song presented depicted her as hard, while she was admittedly, quote, as soft as they come. Nancy recalls that when she was in the studio recording the track, she first tried singing it like the sweet girl she was. After giving it a go, the producers instructed her to sing it, quote, nasty, like she wasn't a virgin anymore. Obviously, just like today, sex sells. That's true even if you're the daughter of the chairman of the board. Another regret, don't get married young. 
At age 20, Nancy Sinatra got married to fellow American pop singer and actor Tommy Sands in 1960. Five years later, they divorced. While she later said there was nothing wrong with Sands, she found him pretty adorable and admired his talent, Nancy admits they were simply too young to get married. In a 2021 interview with The Big Issue, the then 80-year-old aging star said that back in those days, if you were a, quote, nice girl like she was determined to be and wanted to have sex, then you got married. But obviously getting married just to have sex is not really a winning formula for a successful relationship. In the same interview, Nancy said her number one piece of advice for young people is to not get married too young. Instead, they should enjoy their youth while they still can. While continuing their education and enriching their lives, Sinatra says young people should take time to have fun, explore who they are, and maybe have an affair or two. Nancy wishes she'd been a bad girl. Speaking with The Guardian in 2008, Sinatra said that being the daughter of Frank Sinatra was, quote, more normal than you might expect. When she was a child, Frank was on the road most of the time, traveling with his band. Nancy first lived in an apartment in New Jersey, and since Frank had yet to hit it big, she and her mother lived off very little money. After Frank became successful, she moved to a house in Jersey's Hasbrook Heights. Since the house's windows were accessible from the street, and Nancy's mother was afraid of her baby being snatched up by some crazy person, Frank moved his family to Toluca Lake near Los Angeles, where she spent the remainder of her childhood. Despite being raised around Rat Packers and putting out that hit 1960s taboo-pushing song, Sinatra was by her own account a good girl. Looking back on things, Nancy wishes she had tapped into the culture of the 60s a bit more and had the courage to be a bad girl. Instead, she got married and felt like she was supposed to take the safe path. To think she was both the daughter of one of the most famous bad boys in the world and put out such a salaciously sexual song and still ended up refraining from indulging in excesses is pretty crazy. You can hear the tinge of regret in Nancy's voice whenever she talks about it. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you agree with Nancy Sinatra's advice to young people to not get married too young? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.